Hi friends, it's Lana here. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes um, just to give you a chance to jump on. Let me check. No, I'm right on. I'm a minute early. <laughs> I apologize for those of you that may have set an, uh, an alarm. But uh, I'm just going to wait a minute just for um, some people to join and make sure that everything is okay, that my internet's going good. Hello, everybody. Great to see you. Hi, friends. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Greetings to you from the very warm Sunshine Coast. <laughs> so for those of you that are uh, not in Australia, uh, those of you in the US, I've been looking uh, at beautiful photos of snow and, uh, and wishing I was there. <laughs> uh, but it's very hot right now here on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. Hi, friends. Good to see you. Hey, Tanya. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, so many friends on. Hi, everybody. Well, um, before I dive into uh, this word that I have uh, today that I, I really felt to share, um, I just want to quickly address um, the Facebook uh, account issue uh, that I am having at the moment. I know it's causing a lot of confusion for a lot of people. Um, so I just wanted to uh, just clarify uh, right now um, what's happened. So for the, I don't know, 20th, 30th time, uh, a fake Facebook account has been created uh, under my name. Uh, and what I did was I actually, uh, I actually shared the fake account to say to people, hey, don't add this account. This is not me. Right. And uh, and some people got a little bit confused thinking, oh, is Lana actually saying this account is hers? And so I've been getting a lot of messages and comments from people saying uh, which account is the right account. Um, so I wanted you to know, obviously, this one is the right one. And I have a public uh, figure page profile page that has um, I don't know, I haven't looked recently, but it's got over 60,000 likes. Uh, so you will know that is my official page. Uh, this other page that has been created in my, my name uh, only has a couple of hundred likes uh, and they've taken everything off my page so it looks exactly like both of my other pages. Uh, but I just wanted to clarify with you um, that uh, these two pages are the official ones. I've put some notes at the top of my pages saying, hi, everybody, this is the official one. Uh, we're in the process of attempting uh, to get verified again. We've applied a few times and uh, we haven't got it yet. So please be praying for us. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to clear up that, that miscommunication because I know a lot of people were like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so I thought the best way to do it is to actually tell you. <laughs> so uh, here it is. So um, anyway, let's move on from uh, the the unhappy stuff and let's move on to some happy stuff. And uh, and that is what the Lord is, is saying. So friends, um, I wasn't planning on coming on today to do uh, a Facebook Live um, but this morning the Lord is uh, has really been burning a word in me. Um, I guess that's, that's really similar to uh, quite a number of words I've been releasing lately. Um, I'm just going to fix my screen. Sorry, we're just having a little bit of... Uh, it's going a bit blurry. Um, uh, so I'm going to release this word... Uh, now that I really feel like the Lord has um, really burnt on my heart today to release to you. I've been sitting on this word uh, for a long time, maybe five or six months. I have mentioned this word in passing uh, briefly when I've been ministering, sometimes on Facebook Live. Uh, but God really has brought me back to this word. And as I share it, you'll see that it has a very similar theme to all of the other words I've been releasing lately. So I, I'm saying to the Lord, like, God, I feel like you're repeating yourself in different ways, right? It's the same theme, it's the same message, but you're using different examples uh, to communicate the same message. And, you know, 
I'm not going to move until he moves. So if he's repeating himself, if he's constantly saying the same thing over and over again in different ways, I'm just going to echo what he's saying. And uh, and so I really feel like um, as I dive into this word, I, I really feel there's a... Um, uh, there's a, a real excitement in this word and I feel like the reason that the Lord is repeating this theme is because he wants everybody to get it right he wants everybody on board he wants everybody to um, what's the word to receive what it is that he's about to release so if you um, read my latest uh, prophetic word I released I think it was this week it might have been last week uh, but it was called God is about to show up tarry and uh, and I really um, I really felt the Lord give me a word I'm just going to look at it briefly um, out of uh, Acts chapter 2 uh, I woke up hearing the Lord saying you must tarry over and over and over again um, and uh, let me just see some of these comments sorry okay so I I'm just going to address this comment uh, Kathy you're just saying he's saying the same thing but nothing is happening I don't understand so uh, what I have noticed in my my prophetic journey with the Lord is that he will often uh, continue to repeat himself and he will say this is the season of breakthrough and he will keep saying it and he'll keep saying it and he'll keep saying it but the season might be five years the season might be 10 years and and I've noticed with the Lord he's so kind and he's so loving that he will often um, give us so much of a heads up he'll say hey this is what I'm doing this is what I'm about to do wait hold on hold on hold on and so I want to encourage you don't be discouraged uh, when you keep hearing the Lord saying the same thing but you're waiting for the manifestation because it's actually I believe the kindness of God and the goodness of God that he gives us the encouragement hey in the waiting right now I'm gonna keep repeating myself it's coming I've promised it it's coming it's coming and in your waiting I'm gonna keep encouraging you so I, I really want to encourage those of you that have been feeling like you know God I've been hearing you say so many things and you keep saying the same thing but I but nothing's happening I'm not seeing the manifestation yet so I would encourage you to continue to engage with what God is saying continue to um, activate your faith and say I'm gonna believe again I'm gonna hope I'm gonna hold on to what he is saying and one question that I always um, ask the Lord uh, when I hear him repeating himself is that I always um, check my own heart I always say to the Lord God have I obeyed the last thing that you shared have I obeyed have I you know is there anything that I need to do to partner with engaging with your word there's always um, a response that is required from us as God's people to engage in what he's saying so I just would encourage you in the waiting um, to, to engage with his word but also ask the question Holy Spirit is there anything that I need to be doing is there anything I haven't done Lord what are you saying Hallelujah. Okay, so, sorry, comments are going so quickly I can't really keep up. Um, yes, so tarry means to wait. Um, so the uh, so this is the word. So I released it this week or last week, whenever it was, but the Lord, I heard him say, you must tarry. And I heard the scripture out of Acts chapter 2, verse 2, and it says this, suddenly they, so, sorry, suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. And I, I felt the Lord um really uh, highlighting that he's about to show up I, I felt very strongly that the Lord wanted to encourage his people you need to be in a place where you are actually tarrying in my presence where you are you're actually lingering in my presence and positioning yourself wait you know like Jesus said to the disciples go and wait because I'm sending the Holy Spirit and I really feel the Lord is breathing upon tarrying right now. I really believe the Lord is um, is really breathing upon that place of waiting in his presence. And so I, I wanted to start with this word because the, the other word I'm about to release, you may think, hang on, they're opposite. Like, are they contradicting? Well, no, they're not. It's both. So in Acts chapter 2, you see this 
amazing wind like crazy like it says a violent the sound of a violent blast of rushing wind into the house out of the heavenly realm the war the roar of the wind was so overpowering uh, that it, nobody could bear it it was it was crazy so it was a powerful demonstration of God right of the of the Holy Spirit and so I want you to keep that in mind as I dive into the word that I'm about to release now because this passage of scripture that I want to look at now, um, you know, is in some ways you can look at it and go, wow, that's opposite. But I want you to try, I want you to come on this journey with me. Stay with me because I, I really feel the Lord on this. So um, recently, as I was just kind of lingering with the Lord, um, I heard the Lord say, there is transition in the stillness. And he said it again, there's transition in the stillness. As soon as he said it the second time, I had an overwhelming sense um, of a story in First Kings. And I actually want to read this story to you out of First Kings. It's chapter 19, and it's the story of Elijah. And just before I dive into it, um, you know, the, the back story, I guess, of this story is that you know, Elijah was in major depression. You know, you may know this story. I'm sure we all do. Uh, Jezebel says, I'm coming to kill you. And Elijah has a freak out, right? Hey, Katie. Hey, my friend. Good to see you. <laughs> um, so Elijah freaks out because Jezebel is coming, wants to kill him. And what happens? He ends up sitting down under a tree and says, take my life. I want to die. Uh, the angel of the Lord comes and touches him, tells him to eat and drink, and then Elijah's strengthened um, and he heads to Mount Sinai. So I want to look at 1 Kings 19 verses 9 to 16. I know that's a, a pretty big chunk of scripture, but I, I really want to read it all to you. I felt like the Lord told me to, to read every, uh, sorry, every one of these verses. So here, verse 9, I'm reading from, just because a lot of you do ask uh, what translations I'm using. So I'm using the uh, New Living translation. So 1 Kings 19, I'm going to uh, read from verse 9. So there he came, Elijah, to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind was there, an earth sorry, after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Remember that, right? There was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Right, for the second time. He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left and now they're trying to kill me too. Then the Lord told him, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, the grandson, and that's it. We won't go on because those names I can't pronounce, right? <laughs> so verse 16, we'll stop there. Okay, so this is the story that I want to look at. This story uh, has been really very strongly on my heart for about six months now. Um, the Lord led me to it six months ago and it has been really burning in my spirit. I haven't released a lot out of this, uh, this passage yet until one word before and now. Um, but I really believe that there's a lot in this passage that God is saying and I believe that 
it's a lot deeper than I'm, I'm carrying, right? I, I really feel like I've, I've just kind of um, skimmed the surface with the Lord. And I'm going to share with you uh, the beginning of what I believe that the Lord showed me through this passage. So I'm going to be looking at my notes just as we go because I've, I was writing as I was hearing what the Lord was saying. But what I want to say um, is I just want to give you a few interesting facts. So out of my Bible, the New Living Translation, there's some study notes at the bottom and I was looking at some other, other study notes. And um, in my Bible, it says this, some suggest that Elijah came to the very place where God appeared to Moses in Exodus 33, verses 21 to 33. God says to Elijah, what are you doing here? The New Living um, Study Bible suggests that the Lord's question could have two implications uh, for Elijah. One, why had Elijah come? And secondly, did he understand the significance of the place where he stood? Now, it's interesting because Elijah replies to the former part of that question, right? So Elijah um, had boldly announced that he's on his own and uh, in his stand for God and now he's feeling self-pity right he's like I, you know I, I stood for you and now I'm on my own and I really um, I really found it interesting that the Lord asked him the same question twice as I was meditating on the story I said I, like I was like God like you asked the question Elijah answered and then you asked again right and uh, and I really that really struck me and then I was I like, kept reading my Bible notes it actually says well you know what not in these words but he didn't get it right Elijah didn't get it so God asked him again like what are you doing here and Elijah gives him the same answer again if you look at the passage it's exactly the same response to God's question twice so then we move on um, God isn't in the wind, right? The windstorm comes, he's not in the wind. The earthquake comes, but God isn't in the earthquake. The fire comes, God isn't in the fire. But what happens? The Lord is in the whisper. And I feel the, the, the Lord really strongly on this, really strongly on the whisper. So this powerful, uh, what could you call it, demonstration or... Um, uh, things that, that often uh, signal God's presence in this passage, right? This, this story, like it didn't herald God's approach. What heralded God's approach in this, um, in this story was the whisper. So this is where I was like, you may be looking at, at what I shared regarding Acts and go, wow, the Holy Spirit showed up, you know, as the wind. And, and there was a powerful, like, the sound of the wind. And everybody was like in awe. Nobody could handle it. And then you've got this story here in Kings where you've got a wind, you've got earthquake, you've got fire, but God's not in it, right? He's in the whisper. And I really feel right now in this season that the Lord is saying there are going to be very powerful demonstrations of his power. There are going to be power, like demonstrations of his presence and his power unlike anything we've ever seen. Signs and wonders when, he's, when he shows up, there are going to be crazy, amazing demonstrations of the power of God right, that are going to leave God's people and, and the world in awe of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There are about, we're about to move into that. But do you know what I, what I really feel the Lord saying? I really feel him saying, that's coming. You're moving into that season more than you, you've ever seen. But don't, absolutely don't forget the quiet place. Don't forget the place of stillness. Don't forget that, that place where you quiet yourself before me in the secret place. You come before me in the stillness right in the stillness and you lean in to listen to my whisper because what's the what's the um the thing about a whisper if i'm on the other side of my house and my husband kevin's on the other side and he whispers to me i can't hear him right i'm not going to hear him because we're so far apart so what struck me about this passage that i just love is that like a whisper to me is like intimacy. It's like it's this place of if I want to hear a whisper, I need to lean in. 
I need to be close, right? If someone's going to like whisper in your ear, you lean towards them so you can hear what they're saying. And I feel there's an invitation from the Spirit of God right now for the body of Christ that says, hey, will you lean in? Will you cultivate that place of stillness? Will you cultivate that, that tarrying place, that lingering place? Lean in because I'm about to whisper some of the most profound ground breaking revelations of the, in the word of God and the secrets from my heart unlike anything that you've carried before but you, you you must tarry you must position yourself in the place of of waiting and intimacy to hear what I'm going to say because I may and I know I say this all the time friends but I may just show up in a way that you don't expect and it struck me in this passage you know I thought would Elijah have been used to the loud demonstrations of God? Of course he would have. Look at what happened when, you know, he called down fire on the altar with the prophets of ba Baal. Like all of these things, I'm like, he would have been, um, he, he'd seen so many demonstrations of the power of God. And yet in this passage, he, he's actually in this place where he sees, like hears the wind or sees the wind and the fire and the earthquake. And then comes the still small voice. But do you know what else I love about this story? I, I did a little bit of research this morning. Um, I keep saying, do you know what I love about this story? Can you tell that I really love like everything about this story? Um, but one other thing that I love about this story is um, what struck me is that when Elijah heard the whisper, what does it say? Let me just get my Bible. It says here in verse 12, and after the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in it. After the fire there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Verse 13, what does it say? When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And that just jumped out at me. I thought, wow, Lord, he heard your whisper and then he lifted up, right? He lifted up his cloak and wrapped his face in his cloak, in his mantle. And I thought, there's something on that. <laughs> so I started researching and I came across a commentary. Um, it's called Gill's, G-I-L-L apostrophe S, Exposition of the Entire Bible. And it says this, and it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. Through reverence of divine majesty, he perceived that God was there. Now, to me, I just, I want to stop there for a second. He perceived that God was there. So could it, ha could it be that God had showed up in a completely different way that was unfamiliar to Elijah? Could it be? I'm just asking the question. But the result, the fruit of hearing the whisper of God was what? He lifted his mantle, covered his face in reverence, right? In awe of the majesty of God, right? Elijah wasn't in a good place at, at this point, right? He like I said, he was before this, he was depressed. He wanted to die. He obviously still didn't have peace because he kept answering the Lord and saying, I'm not happy. <laughs> I stood for you. Hello. But when he hears the gentle whisper, he pulls up his cloak, covers his face in reverence. Now, stay with me. So through reverence of, his, of the divine majesty he perceived was there, that God was there. And through shame and confusion under a sense of his impurity, imperfections and unworthiness, the same as, oh, sorry, 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 I'm, 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 I lost my place. Confusion under a sense of his impurity, imperfections and unworthiness. Full stop. Now this got me really excited. At the bottom of this like, little paragraph in this commentary, it says, other references to the face being covered and do you know what one of the references was it was Isaiah chapter 6 now this was amazing because to me because the Lord spoke to me um, oh golly many months ago and he said to me Lana prophesy 
that there are going to be encounters with me in this season. Um, they're going to be Isaiah 6 encounters. They're going to be cleansing, commissioning encounters that are going to see my people uh, in a place of awe and a place of wonder. And out of that place of, of encountering me, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, uh, that place of, of the awe being restored and, and the, uh, the revelation of, of his holiness, out of that place, I am going to release my people out into the world, carrying that fire, right? And they're going to reform and they're going to change and they're going to shift the world and atmospheres and cultures, right? But I want to look at this. Isaiah 6, what was it? Verse 2. It says this, attending him. Oh, let's start at verse 1. It was in the in the year of uh, sorry, it was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Verse 2. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces and with two they covered their feet. Amazing, amazing. And I looked at it in the the uh, commentary notes. And it says they covered their faces so as not to look on God. And as I kept reading in Gil's commentary, it says, look at Exodus 3, verse 6. And Exodus 3, verse 6 is the story of Moses, right? And it's where um, the Lord walks. Well, let me hang on. I've lost my page. When... Um, when the Lord saw Moses uh, coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, right? The middle of the burning bush and says, Moses, Moses, and, Lord, and Moses says, here I am. And what does God say? Don't come any closer. The Lord warned, take off your sandals for you're standing on holy ground. Verse 6. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Moses heard this, what happened? He covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now, I don't know about you, but these type of little things just make, like, it just makes me so excited and so happy. Like, I, I just, I love how the Lord connects things. So as I'm looking at Isaiah 6 verse 2, I'm looking at Exodus, I'm meditating on 1 Kings with the story of Elijah, I'm seeing this amazing theme. God is going to show up, right? God has showed up in, in such significant ways in this, in this story that, that Moses is left like in awe and fear of God. He covers his face. He's like, oh, my gosh, you've got Elijah. Here's the gentle whisper, covers his face in reverence and awe. Then you look at Isaiah 6, the seraphim, they use their wings to cover their face. Friends, I just, I really feel, I can't even articulate how clearly um, with words what I'm feeling. But I really believe that if you and I position ourselves in this season to spend time waiting on God and tarrying in his presence, lingering, not for what we can get, not for the latest prophetic word, not for, you know, anything else but just to be with him to know him like yes god wants to hear what we're what what we're praying about he's in he's invested he's interested in our lives but i really believe that there is a significant transition in the stillness right now that is going to come into your life as you position yourself before him and interestingly looking at that story of elijah in kings from this encounter, um, oh no, no, before I go there, let me just say this. In, that in, in this encounter, Elijah has and he hears the gentle whisper. What happens? One is that God directs Elijah to re, uh, sorry, God directed Elijah to retrace his steps. So back to the place where he'd strayed from God's mission. From there, he could move forward. Right? That's from my study notes in my Bible. So here is Elijah and he's run in the opposite. He's like, oh, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with this. And in this encounter, what happens? The Lord says to him, go back and retrace your steps. Go back to the mission that I've called you to. 
and I felt the Lord wanted to encourage many of you if you are feeling discouraged in your mission if if something has come into your life that that just disappointed you I don't want to assume but I, I just I really felt like that the Lord is going to um, what's the word he's going to uh, right wrong turns and he's going to give you direction um, in any ways that you may have stepped out any ways that disappointment weariness you've gone God I just can't do this anymore I give up I just want to prophesy over you today in the name of Jesus that as you encounter the Lord as you you um, you wait in that place you're still before him that as you hear his voice that he is going to give you the direction, the encouragement that you need to get back on mission, right, to get back on track with what God has called you to. And God's going to heal those disappointments. He's going to heal the reasons why you may have, have given up on your dream, on your call. Uh, but, but I really feel there's going to be a recommissioning that's going to take place, that God is going to give you a fresh revelation again of the, of the vision that he gave you. He's going to show you again his heart. I, I even see a um, I even see encounters with um, with the Lord releasing revelation of the gospel of Calvary of, of the what's the what am I seeing the um, the importance of of eternity I see many of you being um, literally on your faces just weeping as as the Lord uh, like unlocks again the revelation of what Jesus Christ did at Calvary and the, the hope of the gospel and the hope of Jesus, the salvation of the world. And I, I'm just seeing these encounters coming that are going to far outweigh the things that have, have tried to knock you off track, the things that have caused you to, to say, I just don't want to, I don't want to run with that mission anymore. I'm tired of that. It's easy just to kind of sit and give up like the price was high I got I got wounded I got hurt God's gonna heal you friend I really feel that right now that the revelation of the gospel the revelation of the love of Jesus as he hung at Calvary his death and resurrection is going to heal your heart and there's going to be an impartation of the fire of God that's going to be released into you to get you back on the mission that God has called you to and friends it's not too late it is not too late. Don't let the enemy tell you, oh, yeah, well, you gave up on that, so you can't, you know what, that's it. You've missed the boat. Friends, with him, all things are possible. He is the God of restoration. He's the God of, of increase. He is the God that can take the worst. You can run to the other end of the earth, right? And, and then you come back, you're like, God, I'm sorry. And he can change things in an instant. Hallelujah. Secondly, um, in this story, I found it interesting in verse 18 that God corrected Elijah's thinking. He corrected his thinking because that, oh, hang on, my I've got the fan on in here because it's so hot and uh, <laughs> and my... Um, my Bible has, uh, the, the fan's blown my pages to another, another book of the Bible. Okay, so let, where was I? Verse 18. Uh, where are we? Um... Oh, hang on, friends. I've lost where I was. Uh, God, what are you doing here, Elijah? Um, oh, sorry, I've lost my little note. I had a sticky note on here um, that had the exact reference, and now it's blown off and I can't find it. <laughs> All right, so, um, but God corrects um God corrects his thinking, right? God says to him, you know, you're not alone. There's like, here we go, like there's others of you, right? You're not, you're not here. It's not just you, right? And I, I really felt like there's going to be some, um, there's going to be some correcting of thinking that's going to happen as you encounter the Lord in this season, in, in this place of, of beautiful stillness, in, in that place where you lean in to hear the gentle whisper of God. That the Lord's going to correct some thinking. Um, in my one of my, uh, I think it was a Facebook live I did with uh, Larry Sparks. Um, if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to. It's a, um, it was a great uh, just kind of prophetic chat with Larry. He's a, a, a good friend, um, and we were talking about what God is going to do in 2018. And one thing the Lord told me was, "Go back. Uh, I'm taking my people back to school with the Holy Spirit." 
Um, and so, and that's what I feel like as well in this passage, that there's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of things where God is going to say, hey, what you've been thinking about that thing or about yourself or about your call or about um, your reality, your situation, what's going on around you, that's actually, that's not the case. And there's going to be a, a real shift that's going to take place as God speaks to you and says, no, 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 hang on a sec. This is actually reality. This is what's going on around you. And, you know, I, the, the correction of God is not something to be feared, right? He, he's such a good father. He corrects his, his children because he loves us. And, you know, in this passage, here's Elijah he's still in self-pity. And God's like, no, hey, come up higher. Like, let me give you the, the perspective that I'm seeing, right? You are not alone. This is how things are. Now go back. To where I called you and do this and you know you can read on from there so I just I really feel to encourage many of you that there's going to be a, a recorrection of thinking and that it's not going to be something that's going to um, it's not going to be uh, what's the word it, it's going to bring life to you right it's going to bring freedom to you it's going to bring um, it's going to bring, uh, uh, what am I seeing, like refreshment to you again that any times where, uh, where you and I oh Oh, thank you. Okay, that reference is 1 Kings 19, 14. Thank you so much for that. I had a sticky note and it blew off. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, yeah, but I really feel like there's going to be a, a, that correction that's going to bring life to you where so often we, in our humanness, we can get caught in our, in our soul, can't we? We can have pity parties and we can get in that place of saying, woe to me, like, God, I've been fighting, I've been doing this for you for so long and, oh, look at this. But one word from his mouth, one word from his heart changes everything changes everything and sometimes we need that word from the Lord that says hey wake up this isn't actually reality right you know come on like stand up who are you you're like who are you in Christ like move in your authority it doesn't mean to um, to discount uh, what we walk through and processes and things that we feel but we can't be governed by our emotions right and so I, I just I really feel like the Lord's gonna correct some uh, wrong thinking in this season he's gonna correct some reality uh, and say hey that's not actually the case and the fruit of that is going to be it's going to refresh you it's going to re-energize you it's going to break those clouds of confusion it's going to break those clouds of depression and it's going to break that any self-pity and uh, and stuff that's trying to hold you down <clears throat> excuse me it's going to breathe life to you again and you're going to have a fresh perspective again of what God has called you to hallelujah um, I find it interesting as well <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, the what is the, the result of this passage? What happens after this encounter? A completely new season is birthed. So if you keep reading this, pat, like you keep reading on in the story, so you've got here we, we've Elijah's encounter the Lord, the gentle whisper, you know, amazing, God has corrected him and said go back, changed it, like corrected his thinking, and then what happens is that Jehu comes on the scene and then if you go and look at uh, verse 19, I'm not going to read it now just for the sake of time, but if you look at verse 19 uh, to 21, uh, who enters the story but Elisha? And, uh, and I, I really felt the Lord saying that out of this place of, of encounter that is available to you, and to me in this season, in the place of lingering, in the place of stillness, hearing the, the whisper, you know, the, the, the way that God is going to show up in such a new and fresh way, that the fruit is going to be, there's going to be a birthing of a new season for many of you. There's going to be a commissioning again uh, into the new things that God has for you uh, in 2018 and beyond. You know, look at, um, you know, all of the different, 
stories we've talked about but look at Isaiah 6 you know that was a a profound encounter with the Lord and then what happens there's a commissioning right that, that, that's the result like he goes out from that place and I, I'm seeing that again in this this passage right the Lord commissions Elijah again go back and then the next thing we've got Elisha on the scene and so I just I want to encourage you that these encounters that are upon you in the, the quiet place, in the stillness, in the leaning in to hear the whisper of God, that there is going to be a, a new and fresh commissioning for many of you. God is going to send you out with fresh vision. He's going to send you out with new assignments. Uh, he's going to send you out with the revelation that you need, right? Hear that? The revelation that you need for the assignment uh, that he has for you. Because many of you are going to move into completely new things in 2018. Uh, just, just as I'm sharing, I'm seeing, uh, I actually just had a vision and I saw the Lord um, and he was changing directions. He was, he was rubbing out certain paths and he was drawing new ones. But what you actually need in order to walk in those new paths uh, you will receive in the place of, of waiting on the Lord, in that still quiet place He's going to give you the revelations uh, and the, the downloads that you need in order to walk the new path that will open up before you in 2018. And I, I, I'm just going to say this because I'm feeling this very strongly. And this isn't a um, this is an encouragement. Don't try and make anything happen. Don't don't try and manufacture anything. You know, just I, I'm really feeling to encourage you that in the still quiet place as you you sit with the Lord as you rest with him as you tarry in his presence not only is there going to be amazing life-changing encounters and the Lord may possibly show up in a way that you haven't seen him before so I'm seeing many of you that haven't had visions that you've been you know you hear from the Lord through the word awesome and, but I, I'm seeing that the Lord is going to continue to speak through the word, but I'm also seeing suddenly um, many of you are going to start having visions and many of you are going to start having dreams. I really feel like um, even in the stillness, the quiet place of just sitting and leaning into the Lord for that whisper to hear what he's saying, I'm seeing a transition in how he manifests himself in your life taking place. And many of you are already in that place right now where, where God has been speaking in a certain way for, for a long, long time, and now maybe you're not hearing him as much in that way. Don't be discouraged because God is, is actually preparing to encounter you in a new and fresh way. Always, always, always through the word right always never outside of the word always in the word and staying in the word I'm not talking crazy like you know unbiblical stuff I'm talking about um, that the Lord is wanting to uh, encounter you in new and fresh ways could it be that you know what some of your greatest encounters with the Lord may come as you're driving along and you see a billboard sign and the Lord begins to speak to you. You know what I mean? God speaks through anything in ev like everyday life. We just need to be looking for him everywhere. Hallelujah. Okay, let me just have a look. Uh, okay, now I just want to end with this. Um, the Lord gave me a few uh, declarations um, that uh, he wanted me to release over you. Uh, as at the end of this this Facebook live my I pray that this has been an encouragement to you I really encourage you if you haven't uh, read that story for a while of Elijah go and sit on it for a little while you know sit with the, the Lord and say hey Jesus what do you want to share with me about um, about this story because there's so much in this what I have shared is just little bits and pieces that I feel God has spoken to me through but I, I really feel there's a, a depth in this story and in the story of Moses and the burning bush and Isaiah 6 they all connect and there's there's a real depth of revelation that the Lord is wanting to give us uh, through the, these stories so I would encourage you uh, to really just sit with the Lord and meditate on them and ask him like God what do you want to say uh, through this for my life because I feel he's really breathing upon these right now for now and for what we're moving into next year and beyond. So um, I want to prophesy over you right now in the name of Jesus that you are about to be closer 
to him as you position yourself in the tarrying, waiting place than you've ever been. I, I really saw as I was preparing for this Facebook Live, I saw many of you actually weeping and it was a, like you were crying tears of joy because you were in this place with him in intimacy that you never thought was possible. You never thought that it was possible to be this close. Many of you are already so close, right? You're so in or over your head. But I feel the Holy Spirit saying there's so much more. There is so much more available to you and waiting for you right now in this season. But the key is your position. The key is your position. It's not whether God wants to give it to you or not. He absolutely is ready. He, he's waiting. I, I just I feel it so strongly. But he's waiting for those who will engage and position and say, no matter what, I will tarry. No matter what, I will linger. No matter what, I will like clear my schedule so I can just be with the Lord. Even if I lie in my prayer room on my back or my face for three hours in worship and he doesn't say a word, that's okay. I am just going to be in his presence and I'm going to keep being in his presence and I'm going to keep being in his presence and I'm going to keep keep being in his presence. I just, I really feel like um, the Lord wants to, to really encourage you that there is so much more available to you right now. There is so much more available. I, um, I released a prophetic word. I don't know. I always say, I don't know, because I'm not really great with dates, but uh, I prophesy in the name of Jesus and decree that I'm great with dates. I shouldn't say that, should I? I am great with dates. <laughs> um, I released a prophetic word called fire and flippers and the Lord spoke to me uh, very, very clearly about the revival and, and the, the awakening reformation that's going to hit the earth. Uh, but the one thing that was needed uh, to carry the, the fire, the, the fire of God, the, the, the revival fire was that his people needed flippers. And, uh, and when I was waking, I said, Lord, flippers. And, uh, and he said to me, yes, to go deep. And I thought, oh, isn't he so amazing? He's so creative the way that he speaks. But the Lord wants us to go deep. The Lord wants you and I to throw ourselves in completely and do whatever we can, like not in striving, in positioning, whatever we can to just be in his presence and to receive all that he has for us. So we need flippers in order to go deep, right? <laughs> um, and I want to prophesy over you in the name of Jesus that out of the encounter with God in the stillness and the whisper, there will be a recommission. I just decree over you right now in the name of Jesus that God is going to God is going to correct wrong turns and wrong steps and I decree right now in the name of Jesus that wrong thinking is going to be broken in these encounters in the name of Jesus the beautiful correction of the Holy Spirit the way he's going to speak his truth to you is going to correct how you're seeing things there's going to be a recalibration of your sight in the name of Jesus and anything in your soul that's trying to hold you down, anything that's trying to, you know, bring us into a place of self-pity or, or, um, or, you know, just feeling really bad or, you know, I'm all alone, whatever it is. I just prophesy in the name of Jesus that the words that flow out of his mouth, that gentle whisper is coming with power to break those chains in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus that you will be re-empowered and filled with vision and you will be fire-fueled. I saw the words fire-fueled. And as I saw it, I thought, fire-fueled? What, what does that even mean? And instantly I saw the Lord pouring pouring fuel on the fire how are you sto stocking your fire what are you doing to cultivate the fire in your life and god is going to pour the fuel of the holy spirit upon upon those places where you're stewarding the fire and you're stewarding uh the giftings that he's given you i saw an increase and a fueling that's going to take place and there's going to be an increase of hunger i prophesied this in the name of jesus that 2018 you are going to be the hungriest for jesus for his presence and to get the gospel out there and to see his kingdom extended in way in in You've like, I'm trying to, like, 
I'm trying to articulate what I'm seeing. Like you're going to be so hungry that you're going to look at 2018 and say, I've never been so hungry. I've never been so hungry. And that you're going to be like walking around with fire in your bones. I can't keep silent because if like this fire inside of me is going to explode. And those of you that have had fear that has held that fire down, that, that many of you have, have almost felt like I've got this thing over my mouth. I can't speak because what are people going to think? Or what if I say the name of Jesus? Or what if I tell my family member like, and there's been this fear that's kept you contained and, and it's, it's hindered, it's hindered boldness. God is going to really break those chains off you in the name of Jesus. And you're going to speak forth boldly, but every word that you speak is going to be drenched in the, in the love of God. It's going to be drenched in the love of God as you stay in his presence because the more you stay in his presence, the more you become like him, right? The more you allow him to saturate you and the more you soak him in, what you meditate on is what you're going to release. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And lastly, I want to prophesy over those of you um, if you're finding that God is not speaking as much as he was or he's speaking differently, you know, like I said, don't freak out. I want to prophesy over you in the name of Jesus that great transition is happening in your life in the stillness. In the stillness, in the tra in the, the change that's happening, as you position yourself in the quiet place, even if you don't hear him say anything, but you're just in his presence, you're in worship, meditating on the word, even if you don't hear anything. I want to prophesy over you right now in the name of Jesus that there is a transition taking place, that God is actually preparing you for a significant encounter with him unlike anything you've experienced before. It's going to be groundbreaking. It's going to be like grounded in the word, but it's going to be so completely new and fresh that it's going to reactivate you, reignite you. But God is increasing you, friends, increasing you. And I just, I speak awakening to senses right now in the name of Jesus. And I just release right now a, a, a prophetic, uh, an impartation for prophetic dreams, for visions, for encounters. Um, and I prophesy over those of you that haven't had um, haven't had visions or dreams. I'm not saying that, you know, there's anything wrong with that, but I, I just, I really feel like God wants to unlock visions and dreams. The Bible says in the last days, what happens? You know, we will dream dreams and visions. And so I just release that right now in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over many of you right now that you're going to be surprised and shocked by what God is going to show you, that suddenly you're going to have a dream. Suddenly you're going to have a vision and a whole new realm of intimacy with Jesus is going to be unlocked in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm so sorry. There's been so many comments and I haven't been watching. I will try and, uh, and go through those later and, and try and read through them all. Oh, it's so great to be with you all, friends. Hallelujah. Well, there you go. Oh, there's one more thing. <laughs> I can't forget this. Um, just as I went to hit go live on this Facebook Live, I heard the Lord say, and it made me giggle because he's, he said this to me uh, about a year ago. Um, I was, he sent me out uh, on the road uh, to a lot of different places and I was releasing uh, basically a, um, a word about the king is coming and, uh, and about can you hear the sound of rain. Again, the story of Elijah and the cloud the size of a man's hand. Uh, but the Lord really spoke to me and he said that where there's been disillusionment, um, that he was healing it and that he was bringing his people into a place of, of stillness, of lingering. Um, but in the place of waiting, there was going to be a new weight of his glory. And I feel like I've been heralding this message for, for a, you know, nearly a year and a half, maybe. That's probably a year and a half now. Um, but I felt it just, I heard him say it as I went to click go live. I heard him say, as you wait upon me, there will be a new weight of my glory. As you wait upon me, there will be a new weight of my glory. So I want to release that and prophesy that over you right now in the name of Jesus, that as you wait upon the Lord, that you are going to encounter 
a whole new world of, of, of experiencing, of encountering the weight of his glory. But friends, linger and tarry. That's the key. Linger and tarry because the Lord is about to meet you in a way that, that you've never, ever experienced before. I use those words a lot and I've used them a lot in the last 12 months. I've said to the Lord, I feel like I'm prophesying, like you, that, you know, people are going to have encounters that unlike anything they've ever had before. It's like these words are tagged onto the, you know, the prophetic words I'm releasing. And he said, yes, Lana, because this is a groundbreaking uh, season of unprecedented encounters. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. It's a new thing, right? You haven't seen it before, completely new. So I want to prophesy that over you now in the name of Jesus. That, uh, that you would lean in, that you would tarry, that you would listen for his whisper, that you will move into a, a whole new season of wonder. It's a season of awe and wonder, that you are going to be left, you know, just undone by the, the majesty and the holiness of God that you are going to encounter as you position yourself before him. So, friends, I bless you today. Thank you again for being uh, on with me. It's always, always such a joy. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we look forward to doing more of these uh, Facebook Lives with you. If you haven't read our update, uh, we've, uh, the Lord has been very clear that we are to uh, cut down our travel uh, significantly for 2018, uh, but we're, doing, we're going to be doing a lot more uh, media, a lot more uh, Facebook uh, Lives, and we're actually developing uh, an online course which will be out soon and uh, it will involve mentoring and a whole heap of great things. So uh, keep an eye out. But it's been wonderful to be with you. Bless you, friends. There are amazing, amazing, amazing encounters with him ahead. Love you all and it was great to be with you again. Okay, see you later. Bye.